Hello and welcome to the Boat Tie Florida Room. We are in seed starting mode. Right now it is a rainy day out there. Not a lot we can do out there anyway. And so I thought I would start doing some more planting of seeds. Uh, wanted to do a few different things. We planted some onions the other day. And it was a very long video because there's a lot involved in onions and I wanted to make sure to get a good representation of the information out to you. But um, I was thinking about there are a whole bunch of different ways to plant out seeds and some of them are important for certain things, some of them aren't. And we hear a lot of stuff, oh you can't do this, you shouldn't do this, and, and, and all this other stuff. And there might be more advantageous ways to plant certain seeds, there might be less advantageous ways to plant certain seeds, but there are a lot of ways to plant seeds and this is not something that can be, that should be um, made too complicated. which. Uh, I know for me, I'm, this is my, I'm entering my fourth year gardening, uh, of successful gardening, I should say, and I was making it very complicated at the beginning, and it really isn't, and uh, I want to show you just a few different things. You can go back and look at that uh, uh, onion video, but we're going to do a series of three videos here real quick and show three different minor alterations that I'm going to do. Some are um, better than others. And I just want you to kind of get an idea of a few different things that can be done. Uh, we are going to be planting out um, some basil, some green globe artichokes, and some peppers. And so um, some of the, my favorite things to do, but I have different purposes behind planting each one. And uh, we're going to have the same intro on all three videos. So uh, don't be confused if you see the same intro here. It's going to be a different video and I'll try to put title across the bottom here as to which video we're looking at but uh, it will uh, show you some of the variations that are okay you can experiment with it and and that's the big thing experiment try things some things work for me that don't work for other people and vice versa uh, I see some people do things I'm like I cannot get that to work uh, for example I can't get lavender to grow for to save my life and it is just the easiest thing to plant according to a bunch of people and so I'm doing something wrong. But um, anyway, I've got some uh, seed trays here with individual uh, 6L trays in here and we are going to get to planting. So here we go. Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. So welcome to part three of this uh, three-part seed starting uh, video. Um, the uh, first one, we just planted some seeds in the soil. Second one, we used a different kind of container. This time, it's a little bit more special. First off, we're going to be planting some uh, jalapeno early hot peppers from Ferry Morris. I got this at my local uh, Lowe's. And the other one, I got a special package from overseas, from England, no less, from Chili Chump. And I tell you what, if you want information on growing chilies, hot peppers, uh, this guy is the guy to watch. He is, I have learned so much from him, and I've even had, I've asked him a few questions. In fact, um, I was, we had eaten at a very fancy restaurant and they served a pepper on our plate and I thought it was so delicious and I couldn't understand what the fellow was saying. I, I misunderstood him so I came back and I told Chili Chump, I said, I'm looking for the name of this pepper and I can't figure out what it was and he called it a pepadu. And so um, I actually went and ordered some pepadu seeds from him and if you'll notice there's I don't know, 10, 12 seeds in here. And I'm not gonna plant them all out, but they're very limited number of seeds here. So I wanna be very uh, careful with what I do with these. So rather than just sticking them in the regular seed starting mix, I'm going to be putting these in a little bit special mix. And I'll show you what I mean here. Now he also gave me, uh, I don't know, eight seeds of this Kang Star Lemon Starburst. And it is a very, very hot pepper. And thank you very much, Chili Chump, if you ever watch this. 
uh, I this is quite the honor. I've heard about these and I've never uh, had them before. So that'll be another adventure because I like adventures in these things. So the big thing here is what I'm going to be doing with my soil. And I'm going to be doing most of the same stuff. I'm going to put the same um, feed in it. Uh, but this stuff is kind of rough. And you've seen me pick, if you've been watching my videos, you've seen me pick the sticks out of this. And there's chunks and forest products and other things in here. Well, I don't want to get that rough of stuff. In fact, if you go get a good seed starting mix, you'll notice very fine particles, very small, very fluffy. And that's what we're looking for. So the reason for that is, if you have a seed in, let's say, pine bark, that pine bark is not going to be touching that seed. And wherever it touches is where moisture gets transferred to that seed from the medium you're growing in. Well, we don't use pine bark chunks to do that with because they're terrible for seed starting. We use fine stuff. And so far, we've planted onions. We've planted um, uh, basil. We've planted artichokes. All that stuff... It's okay with, with lower quality stuff just because they're good germinators and everything else. These are special peppers. I want to give them every advantage I can. And so I borrowed from Mrs. Bowtie's kitchen, uh, whatever this is, but uh, you'll see it has some nice small holes in it. And this, I have discovered that this thing is great for giving me some fine soil. And I can actually use this regular bag over here that I've got. Where'd my scoop go? I got a scoop around here. <clears throat> but I'm gonna pour a scoop of this in here and get me enough to fill a tray. One of these little six cell. And this is a lot of work, I know. It's kind of hard but it is worth it. Uh, in fact, when you're growing yarrow, uh, you really have to get a fine, fine, fine mix. And even if you got seed starting soil, you still want to sift it out a lot finer. But let me show you what's coming out here. Look at this fine stuff. Look at that. Very little big stuff in there. This is beautiful stuff for starting special seeds so and that's what these are these are very special seeds um, I'm going to fill this tray with this stuff now it is dry so we will have to uh, moisten it up so I see I don't have very much there again this does take a little bit of work but it is so worth it because if you got a special seed that you want to grow now I'll tell you straight up, this is not how Chili Chump does it, okay? He is a real pro at this. He is really good at this and much better than I am. Um, basically, I'm functioning with what I have at hand. All right, that should be enough. And so all this fine stuff I'm going to fill this tray with and because it's fine like this it will have a much easier time contacting the seeds transferring that moisture and giving that seed every possible chance to germinate which with a seed like this I really want to do that I want to give it every possible chance now I am using these small cells again uh, because they're easier to for me to maintain um, they'll go in the seed starting tray and go in my seed starting station, which is in the middle of traffic. It doesn't get left anywhere. Uh, last year, when we first moved into this house, I had a lot of stuff growing down in this Florida room. And I discovered very quickly that my ADD brain forgot about things. And if you forget fresh seedlings for a day, you can lose them all. And this Florida room... If the sun is shining, it can get hot. I mean, real hot and fast. And so, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how we lost all the seeds that we lost that first year. All right, so I have a very fine mix. 
You know what? I just realized I didn't put any feed in. Okay, I'm not going to worry about that. The feed, the food is not going to be important for this phase anyway. I will be feeding it with some soluble fertilizer later. The seed in here, this, this little seed, in fact, I'm going to come around and see if I can show you. Here's the packet. And look how small these seeds are. They're very small. So I want as much of the soil in contact with those little tiny seeds as possible so that the moisture can be transferred to them. So I'm going to be very careful with these. And Chili Chump, you can cringe if you want to. I won't, it won't hurt my feelings. Uh, I'm doing what I've got at hand. I'm still a new gardener. If I get these to grow, uh, this is actually better than what I've done on others and still had success. So I'm planting six. If I get all six, I'll be beyond ecstatic. Frankly, if I get three, I'll be extremely happy. Um, heard good things about chili chump seeds. All right, there are six, oops, there are seven seeds. I don't have very many of these, so I'm going to be very conservative with these. One, two, three, four, five. So it looks like there's another six seeds in there, so I could do this one more time if I have to. Now, if you follow my channel along, you'll know that I get into seed saving, so I will be saving seeds from this pepidou. Uh, it is something that I will have in my garden for a very long time. It's a very mild pepper. In fact, a uh, jalapeno on the Scoville scale is like 3,000, maybe three to five, 1,500 to 5,000, I think is the total range. I've seen it. Um, these things are 280. That's it. It's very mild, but the flavor, these, the flavor on these, is, I, it was just amazing. So I'm hoping we can replicate that. There we go. So you can see six seeds right there. And I'm going to put these aside and save these for my second try. Now this does say 1,000 Scoville heat units. So, okay, so let's say 250 to 1,000. I can go with that. That's still a nice mild pepper. Most people can eat that. Um, might make a really good pepper sauce. I don't know. But, so I've got that, you see, they're just sitting there on the surface. I've got it down about a quarter of an inch, but these are a little bit smaller pepper seeds. I think I'm going to just fill to the top of these cells. And you notice I, those seeds were very carefully placed in the middle of each cell. Oops, see, I need more there. Middle of each of those cells, I was not... I do not want to get these, I'm, I'm trying to give these the very best opportunity that I can to get them to grow. So we have a good quality, fine, fluffy soil. I will be putting these in one of the seed starting trays with a dome over it in the seed starting station. I'll show you that at the end of this video. And of course, this is part three of a three part video that I'm recording today, but you can see how I'm really giving this a good soaking. Now that's going to soak into it. It's not, I'm not going to give it enough to soak all the way through here because I'm actually going to be bottom watering this as well. In fact, let me just show you, will it fit in this? Oh, looky there. So when you, when I'm bottom, bottom watering, I'm putting, ooh, putting about a quarter inch of water in there and let it soak a while. And that will soak it. This soil knows how much water it needs, okay? We've got the right kind of soil in here. We're giving it every opportunity we can. And so we'll let that soak there for a little while and it'll soak up what it needs and it'll go into one of the domed trays, which is what this is over here. It'll be covered up. In fact, it's gonna go in this tray. So I don't know why I don't just start it. Um, my other tray is full. So it's gonna go in this very tray. And it will 
be left with about a quarter inch of, and actually it'll be started with about a quarter inch of that soil. That water is going to get soaked up. It's going to be moist in there. I want those seeds to have every chance they can. And I'll leave the cover on there until those seeds start germinating. Once those seeds are germinating, they can come out. That doesn't need the little enclosure and everything once they start germinating, especially once they get past their first two leaves. Those first two leaves are the cotyledon leaves, and those are the leaves, from what I've seen, they're actually like the outer shell of the seed, and it actually opens up and creates the plant. That's the first, Not they're not real leaves, they're not true leaves. They're these, these protective leaves that get it up through the soil. The next set of leaves above that is the first real leaves, and at that point, you got a plant, and you got a, got hope. Uh, the farther and farther you can get it to grow, the more hope you have that it's going to be a successful plant. So that's what we've got here, and we're basically going to do the same thing for these other seeds. I've got these Kang Star lemons, uh, lemon starburst. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. This was a surprise. Feels like I have a few seeds in there. I'm gonna go ahead and prepare a hole. Uh, now, I do have some of the soil from the, the part two and part one in the bottom here. Um, I'm not too worried about down in there in the bottom. Uh, it'll be okay. I'm most worried about the soil that's in the top half of these little cells. So, I was just using some leftover stuff. But let me just uh, sift out some more of this stuff here, this fine, fine stuff. And this, um, if, you're, if you have a Lowe's near you, uh, we have this stay green soil, and it comes in a potting mix and a garden mix. And I like the potting mix for doing potted plants because it is the most consistent that I have found that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Now I'm saying an arm and a leg. I think the potting soil is like $12 or $13 for a 50 pound bag, which is pretty big. I can do a lot of planting with that. Um, but uh, you get into the miracle grows and then the happy frog and good earth and other things. And I, I have a hard time spending that much money on my soil. It might give a good advantage for things to grow. Um, I'm willing to put just a few more seeds in the ground and give my advantage that way. Seeds are cheap. So I'm not saying those are bad things. If you have the funds to do that, by all means do it if you wish. I'm not saying don't do it. Uh, it's just where I'm at right now. We don't spend a lot on this because we don't have a lot to spend on the garden. We do the best that we can, right? As I'm doing this, look, you see more and more of the, the woody chunks appearing. This thing does pretty good. Um, I probably should get a dedicated uh, sifter for the garden. Mrs. Bowtie might appreciate that. I do know we use this for uh, making tamales, but we haven't made tamales in a while. And you can always clean it. good. It's just good earth. I've never been afraid of eating a dirty carrot because the earth has good biome in it. It does nothing but diversify the biome. It's a healthy alternative, right? Okay, so I got a little bit more to put on top here. All right, I don't know that I have six seeds in here. I hope I do. I'm going to put what I have in here. I'm not sure. A couple of these little flecks, I'm not sure they're actually seeds. But I'm going to give them the chance because just like Jess over at uh, Roots and Refuge says, the only seed that will never grow is one that doesn't have a chance. Don't 
think that's a seed. This definitely is a seed. I think there's a seed in there, but I'm not sure. seed won't come out. Come on, buddy. Be brave. Be a brave little seed. Ah, oh, there it goes. Okay. That feels like there is a seed in that. So I put in the, these three corners what I think is the seeds. These others may be just flex, but I believe, believe they're pretty small seeds on this, this uh, lemon starburst. It's not a big pepper. So you can see six seeds. Put a nice little covering on top of those with this very fine mix. Spray it down real good. Let's see how that just soaks in. And again, this is going to go under the humidity dome. Let's see, that water is about half gone. And then we're getting down to the last set. Now, I keep all my little packets, so I'm going to set this aside. Even when they're empty, I keep them in case I lose the label. And down the road, I want to see what I did. But, uh, so anyway, these Ferry Morse jalapeno peppers. Uh, they're a little bit larger seed, I can feel already, and I'm pretty sure because they are actually this year's peppers, pretty sure they're going to do just fine, so I'm actually going to um, plant one per cell. I'm not going to use the special stuff. I'm going to just come over here and put some of the... Uh... Oh, it's already got some in it. Uh, some of this stuff. And yep, it has chunks in it. I'm not as concerned about these seeds because I can very cheaply go get some more. There we go. And again, I'm not pressing hard here. I'm just making sure there's no major air pockets in there. See, it's about a quarter inch down. I'll bet this thing says plant a quarter inch deep. Uh, sure enough, plant a quarter inch deep, and so we come in here and open this very carefully, like an OCD person would. And I'm going to put six seeds. Ooh, there's a lot of. Oh my goodness, there's a ton of seeds in here. Look at this. That's a lot of jalapeno right there. There's even a couple more still in there. So I'm just going to put one seed in each cell. Like I said, frankly, if uh, these don't grow, I'll try it again. Last year I went through two completely different tries. I'm sorry, three completely different tries growing things and killed over 200 plants. But never had a chance. Fortunately, most of them were seeds like this. All right, so... See, we've got that there. I'm going to go ahead and use up the rest of this just because I hate leaving soil sitting around. Mrs. Bowtie does want more jalapenos. I have a feeling she's going to have plenty of jalapenos this year. So I'll do a little bit more there. I think I can squeeze some more out of this. So 
So what I'll do with the leftover here, I'll just toss it in the garden. We're building up the soil in the garden as it is, so this will be good stuff for that. Looky there. Perfect. All right, and I use this little tub for soil all the time anyway. It's about the size I need. If I ever get larger operation, I might use something bigger. But this has been just perfect. In fact, this tub, I got it. Um, if you see the uh, Facebook post on uh, Humble Beginnings from, uh, about the red-headed skink, I actually went and bought this uh, container for that skink. So it was very cool. Big monster thing. Well, if he had his tail. He did not have his tail. So. All right. Get that soaked in real good. I'll set that there for right now because it's time to write labels and you always want to label your seedlings. Um, I, I can't emphasize this enough. Now, I will admit I'm a little OCD. I got ADHD. Um, I forget things. Uh, I do lose labels. Unfortunately, I do lose labels, which is very annoying. But here's the thing. When you're planting something, like we've got this, uh, this pepadu, we've got this uh, Kang Star Lemon Starburst. We have these jalapenos. Let's say these lemon starbursts just explode. And if I didn't know what they were, I'd have a hard time replicating that if I needed more seeds. And so I want to label that to know that is my King Star Lemon Starburst. Now it'd be easy to identify because I'm labeling it in this video because this video is my personal log. I'm also going to write on here KSLS. Now remember I said I keep my packages. I'll be able to go back and figure out what KSLS is, Kang Star Lemon Starburst. Um, it's from Chili Chump. So I'm gonna write Chili Chump. One, 22, 2023, that's today's date. So that's gonna go into that Kang Star Lemon Starburst right there and it will live with that container until something grows out of it. And hopefully something grows out of it. I am crossing my fingers. And we have over here a pepadu. From Chili Chump. One, and Chili Chump does sell seeds. Uh, he has some really cool seeds. In fact, I'm probably going to end up getting more from him uh, after this because he's got some seeds I want to grow, something fierce. I drool over his peppers frequently. Uh, they're, just, they're just, wow. He's got some good flavors. He introduced us to Perry Perry. I ended up finding Perry Perry in the States. Um, So I bought them locally, I say locally, in the United States. Um, but he's got some variations of the Perry Perry that sound real interesting. Let's see, this is a Fairy Morse. This is brand new seeds too, isn't it? It is, so I'm not even gonna write the year it was packed for. One, 22, 2023. 20, now, uh, Chili Chump does, He's a software developer. He has a really good system if you're into the electronics and tech stuff. Um, he's got this, he's developed this system where um, you can use your phone to read RF codes. And uh, I think that's kind of cool. I was a web developer for a lot of years. I'm not, I'm trying to get out of that business now. But, uh, um, you know, if that's what speaks to your mind, it sounds like a really neat thing to try. So, all kinds of ways you can do this stuff. You know, 100 billion people have lived since the creation of the world, and every one of us is different. And uh, so, you know, pursue your, pursue you. You know, figure out what makes you, you work best. 
So we are having a rainy day out here. We already had two rivers flowing past our Florida room here, but I built the patio so that the water would go the right way. All right, this is gonna go on to the seed starting station. Let's uh, go take a look at that and everything else we've done in this little uh, short series of videos. All right, so this is the seed starting station. You can see I have lights in here. Um, so if you are wondering about putting lights in here, of course, we didn't even have any germination. You can see the germination of this, this onions looks like grass up here. It is growing, growing. It's very exciting. Uh, the artichokes and the basil is in that tray back here. It's sitting on, and I like these big tiles. A friend of mine gave me a box of these he had left over. And I think they're what, 16 by 16 tiles. And I use them all over the place. But uh, you'll notice it's actually propped up. So this tile here is level. This board here, you can't really see it's propped up. This board here is level. I actually have a really good level here. And in case you see that, you can see that that bubble is dead center. So uh, the reason for that is watering, bottom watering. And now I'm going to just leave these sitting in the middle. And there's no water left. Hold on. So this water is from the well, not tap water. I try to use that when I can. Uh, sometimes I'll use filtered water. In fact, this thing normally sits right back over here and has water in it. I must have used it earlier. Um, you'll notice that, well, so as far as watering, typically I will have just enough water in here at this point that it will just touch the bottom of that soil because I want it to be able to soak up a little bit of that water and it will soak up and, and again, the soil knows exactly how much it needs, and so you don't have to force it to do anything. It knows what it needs to grow those seeds if you've got a good mix in there. And so uh, just barely, you can see it's just barely enough in there, and I can see that it's actually not, yeah, it is actually pretty level. I need to, whoop, wrong. I'm used to grabbing the, that watering can. This watering can stays out back. There we go. Normally this thing is full of them so, and it doesn't take as much, like, like this tray here and the tray in the back. But uh, anyway, so I just barely touching the bottom of that container and that will soak up the perfect amount of water and on goes the cover. And I will get another little spoon to put on top of there. I used to have a stack of little blocks here that I had did, did oh, here they are what these are for they're very they're just pvc blocks but just enough to keep this cover down tight over the tray and this thing will start showing condensation by morning so it's it's uh, late afternoon right now by morning this thing will have condensation in it and it's going to stay like this until uh, those seeds just start to germinate as soon as they start germinating that cover comes off they need oxygen, they need movement. In fact, I need to get a fan in here so that they can start blowing on these onions and they can start getting strong. And that will be happening just as soon as we're done recording here. But that's my seed starting station. And right now we have these under lights. Um, when something down here starts germinating, I'll be put, moving this over and putting a third light in here. And we'll have two, we can have two trays in here at the same time. I have a feeling those artichokes are gonna take a while to show up, so. Um, We'll have to see. I didn't do a very valiant effort on the artichokes last year. But uh, anyway, so that is my peppers, my special peppers. And I put them right here on the front. If we're in the dining room. Uh, Mrs. Bowtie and I both walk by here all the time. We've got a few houseplants up here. We have a poinsettia from Christmas here. Uh, a couple of poinsettias. We've got a dollar tree. Dollar, what is this thing? A dollar, uh, I don't know what, I don't even know what it's called. It says lucky, whatever it is. Anyway, um, one of those plants. We have a lot of house plants too. But uh, anyway, we come right by here all the time and it's not going to get neglected. I'll be looking at this every day, probably two or three times a day. 
and anxiously seeing these things grow. This onion, this uh, Texas grano right here, oh my goodness, these are amazing. Just looks like little grass popping up everywhere. That's gonna be our onion of choice this year, maybe this other one. But uh, none, in fact, I talked about in the uh, first part of the series how none of the uh, old onion seeds planted. So there's, there's a good illustration of what happens when uh, seeds are too old. And with onions, one year is too old, apparently. So anyway, if you're uh, just coming along and discovering us, uh, be sure and catch the first two parts of this video. And uh, I'll put links at the end of the video or in the, there'll be a card up here above uh, or in the description. They're always in the description as well. So um, don't miss the others. We talked about three different ways to plant out your seeds. Uh, the first one we just did just like the onions. We put soil in and planted the seeds, covered them over. That was it. Second one is we decided to go with a bigger container. Now those bigger containers are going to be tricky because they're going to take a little more water to keep moist enough to germinate the seed. And so that's going to take a little extra work. The basil is going to germinate quickly. In fact, in all reality, I probably need to move the basil over to this one because it's going to be more closely uh, germinating to the peppers. And so uh, that might be better. But those, those artichokes are going to sit there for a while. They sat for a while last year, if I remember correctly. But I wasn't doing videos then, so I don't know. Uh, again, this is my personal journal and of, of things that are going on. A lot of people keep a written record. I keep a video record. Some people keep photo records. All, all kinds of ways to do it, but uh, you're invited along. So please subscribe to don't miss anything. And if you have subscribed and are watching another video, appreciate you watching more videos. It all helps the development of the channel. And uh, click the thumbs up if you thought it was educational, informational, or entertaining and uh, share it on Facebook or any of your other social media if you uh, have any friends that might gain something from this. So uh, these seeds want to grow. It's, it's very cool. God created them to want to grow. And uh, we just have to give them the chance. Don't ever throw away seeds with expiration dates. That doesn't mean they've expired. That just means they can't sell them anymore. Nothing to do with the expiration. And uh, some seeds, I, I love the story in my gardener, um, bought a shadow box. It was all, it was 90 something years old and or 80 something years old. It was old and they grew seeds that had been extinct since that time and are now selling those seeds. I, as of this year, or la I think they started selling them last year, but, uh, got to give a seed a chance. So we're out here on a rainy day. It's about to get cold. We're going for another cold snap for Northwest Florida. Uh, cold snap for us means it might get below 50. I know some of you people laugh. <laughs> Understandably so. I grew up in upstate New York. I know what cold is, but I do enjoy living here and having this weather. So anyway, that's our uh, peppers planted for today. And uh, hopefully next weekend I can get a few more peppers started. The, uh, the, where we are here in Florida, we are about eight weeks out from our average last frost date. And that means March 14th is the average of when our last frost is. And so uh, after that, I can start putting stuff out and into the garden. And so uh, I'm trying to time this out. All this stuff here, well, not the artichokes, they're gonna be seeding for a while. But all these peppers and that basil and everything, They'll be ready to go out in the garden right around the middle of March. Uh, next week, we'll plant some more peppers. That'll be about six weeks. And then a couple weeks after that, we'll start planting tomatoes because they're a lot quicker. They, they, they germinate and get ready to go in the garden a lot sooner. So we'll be doing tomato plants and trying to get them to grow and, and ready to go in the garden sometime in the end of March. So that's the process here. And we're that time of year. Um, about to, about uh, halfway through. No, we're two thirds of the way through winter. I think one. No, oh my, we're only we're not even halfway through winter yet. Okay, so I'm excited. More seeds to go in the garden. More plants to go in the garden. Um, hope your growing is going well. If you're 
warm enough. I hope you're getting some seeds in the soil to, to start germinating and getting ready to go in your garden. If you're way up north, you may need to wait a little longer. Uh, and you may have different choices of things uh, because you don't have as long a growing season, and that's okay too. We're all kind of figuring things out in our local area, so it's, it's different for every region. Um, all that being said, hope you have a good growing season and have a blessed day. Thank mm -hmm. you.